Anyone familiar with Redstone memory devices is probably familiar with the thing that you see in front of me. This is a form of Redstone RAM. You can tile this up and add some additional uh, addressable addressing circuits and create large Redstone RAM devices. So for example, if we were to toggle in a one here, and toggle the right circuitry, this piston down here will lift up and we can read it. See that lamp turns on. We can also turn the uh, data off, write it again, and the lamp doesn't come on when we toggle the address circuitry. This is very fast, but also can take up a lot of space if you're building large amounts of it. An alternative to that is this, which is a piston tape. Again, you're probably familiar with it. And um, it's slow, but it is also memory dense. So in order to be able to read from it, we have to toggle this uh, lever here, which will push this block round, and then we can read it at certain addresses. Again, you need big uh, addressing circuitry, and you'd have to double it, maybe even triple, quadruple the size of it in order to be able to make it read right. However, I believe I have come up with a new type of memory storage. This memory storage can store 27 nibbles, which is four bits in one block. It's a lot. However, it is incredibly slow and you can't address it. So if you wanted to read the contents of this block, you would have to store it into one of these two memory devices or much larger versions of them in order to make it addressable and sort of usable in a redstone computer, let's say. This magical block that we can store 27 nibbles in is a shulker box. This shulker box contains banners and all of these banners are different colours. So each banner has its own set number. Uh, in my encoding that is 15, white banner is 0, 15, 0, 5, uh, grey, I can't remember what that is. But anyway, they all have their own individual number. The only problem is we need a device that can read them. That device, as I say, is incredibly slow. And that device is this thing over here. So, if I, oh crap, uh, that was a bad move. Uh, give me a second. So, we should have a bunch of different shulker boxes containing different streams of data. For example, this yellow one has my test tape in it. This goes uh, in sequence from 0 to 15 and then cycles between 0, 15, 0, 15. You can see it's not a full box either, so you can vary the size of the amount of data that you want to store in each shulker box. So, this is a shulker box drive. This will take the contents of the shulker box and output them as a stream of binary data down here. For example, if I was to load this test tape in here, and then we also need a empty shulker box down here on the output. See that's empty, that one's full. When we toggle this switch, the whole entire device starts up. So this will read the first bit, which it will output in a second, down on the bottom, and it should be f all zeros. There we go. Uh, I've actually got the control circuitry enabled here, so oh, one moment. Uh, this toggles the uh, auto on, so it will just keep reading and reading and reading, but this is also a single step button. Uh, I'll go into the circuitry in a minute. So as you see, it will go through. The next number that it will read will be a 1. 
and then after that we'll read a two, and so on and so forth. As you see, it is incredibly slow, and it's completely unaddressable. So what's going on here? To start with, we have this set of hoppers here. This is nothing new. In fact, nothing here is new. This is an item sorter. So we have the banners in here. Each hopper has its own individual banner, which corresponds to one of 16 uh, quantities of data, which is then outputted down here as a nibble. So that's the maximum amount of memory that this particular drive can store. It goes from the item sorter into this, which is a read circuitry. As you see here, the, uh, the repeaters, they uh, toggle on and off. So we have to lengthen the pulse out to smooth it out. This goes into the read circuitry here. And this uses a bunch of block update detectors in order to turn what is actually quite a noisy signal up here into a single uh, stream of data. Uh, as you see, sometimes lights go on, lights come off. You can have two lights on at the same time and further down the chain. Uh, if you're reading a zero up here and a uh, 15 down there, both lamps can be on at the same time. So we have to smooth that out in order to be able to output a steady stream of uh, nibbles. So this is your read circuitry. It outputs into a encoder, I think, down here, and that outputs your stream of uh, nibbles. Now this is all optional, this blue stuff here. You don't have to build it if you just want to output a uh, redstone analog signal. You can just run that along this green bar of um, blocks here and stick a comparator at the end and you can output just standard redstone stone analog without all of this down here. So in order to be able to produce the pulses, um, we have this device here, which takes one single item out of the shulker box and produces a pulse. This pulse is then fed down into yeah this uh, pulser, which goes down into here and into this piston tape. This piston tape is 16 blocks long, corresponding to the 16 items in a stack of banners. So every time this goes past the redstone read head over here, which is just activated, um, it sends a pulse out here, which is for the decoder, encoder. So it's all fairly basic um, technology that has been around in Minecraft for years. There is nothing new in this device at all. That's the basic circuitry. So down here, you can see the items come in along the top here. They go down into their respective um, sorter. Pulse comes out. Then the items come down into this set of hoppers, which is then fed into this lot here, which then drops it down and feeds it back out into this shulker box. This shulker box is a complete bit-for-bit uh, -bit copy of the one that we've put up here. So there is absolutely no memory, uh, no information lost in the uh, the reading of shulker box. As you see, that was approximately 20-ish nibbles, and it's only just finished um, reading the whole box. It is slow, and as I say, it's completely unaddressable. So if you want to have random access memory, you need to store it in something such as those two over there. So, given that it is incredibly slow, but incredibly memory dense, what sort of purpose does it hold? Well, my first thought is that it could be very useful in redstone computers. The big problem with redstone computers is storing programs. 
you need either large amounts of ROM, piston tapes, or large amounts of RAM. And it gets bulky, and to store multiple programs, you need multiple sets of RAM, ROM, piston tapes. However, by using this shulker box drive, you can store programs in a shulker box, stick them in a chest, and then load them whenever you want to load that particular program. Now, obviously, given that it's so slow and it only stores one nibble, which is four bits, in order to make a byte drive, you would need two of these devices next to each other, pipe it out into your computer, so on and so forth. So, I mean, you could build multiple units of these drives in order to increase the, uh, the bit length. That is the basics of how this shulker box drive works. I don't think I've covered the control circuitry here, but this is completely optional. You don't have to have this if you just want to read a continuous stream of data. So this red uh, section of uh, the machine is your um, control circuitry, as I say. You've got toggle auto here which basically takes, well, let's start at the top. This toggles on and off every time the piston tape comes around to its read head. This will automatically push this block out, spit it out, stopping the stream of bits from the shulker box. However, because of that, you also need a pulse again afterwards to reset the... Um, the spat out block here, and that's performed using this little bit of circuitry here. It's exactly the same string of data, it's just got a um, string of redstone, it's just got a slight delay to it. So it goes through here, comes out here, and pulses this again. That allows it to go into full auto, which I don't believe has any delay to the reading of the blocks. So, if I was to load another program, we'll just turn this off, this holds loading of the program so it doesn't spit out any blocks. You can see that this chest has got the old data from this tape in it, completely identical, no data lost there. So, if I was to load an empty shulker box, I think this is empty, yep, and then we take this, this has got a different, completely different string of data. So we've got it in single step mode. If we switch it on, it should read one single stack of banners and then switch off again. This allows you to request uh, a single set of nibbles, or a single nibble each time, which can be useful if, for example, your redstone computer operates at a slower clock frequency than this. As you see, it's about five, eight seconds, and it's loaded one nibble. We can then toggle that again, pull that block in, and we should get an output of zero down here in a second. There we go. Also of note is this lamp here. This is an indicator that you've got a backlog in this set of hoppers here. If this light comes on, there is no guarantee of data integrity. Your program is going to come out in a completely different order than it went in. So please do remember, if you're going to be using this as a redstone data store, to always swap out the shulker at the bottom. And that is the basics of my shulker box drive. I haven't seen anybody else build anything such as this, I've seen other concepts that don't um, guarantee data integrity, but I haven't seen anything that's this dense or um, this slow. <laughs> if somebody else has come up with a design similar to this, um, please let me know. But I believe that this is a fairly novel concept, apart from all the components which are very not new. Anyway, that is the shulker box drive, stores 27 nibbles in a shulker box, and I believe it is one of the densest memory storage devices 
ever created in Minecraft. Thank you.